Hi, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and an energy worker and also a channel. And at my site, you'll find a bunch of resources for all kinds of astrology and metaphysical learning, including the Chiron Natal Report and the Chiron Book, Chiron 2012 in the Aquarian Age, and also the Chiron Audio Course. Uh, the book is a transcription of that audio course. So this video today is on Chiron, natal Chiron in the 11th house. Uh, I want to put your attention on the fact that I use, uh, I, I approach Chiron in a unique way. Uh, I approach it as the as a marker of energetic sensitivity or the energy antenna. If the sun in your chart represents vitality and how you organize a personality and, and develop ego in healthy ways, if moon is how you make yourself happy and, and nest and nurture, uh, Chiron is the energy antenna, being sensitive to energy and also emotion in other people and in the world around you. So, uh, I'll put your attention on uh, the two videos I made to set up the series on the houses and signs. Um, Chiron overview and also Chiron and energy management that will explain or those two together explain uh, where and why this info comes from and how I deal with uh, Chiron and emotions and all that stuff. So wherever Chiron uh, is in your chart, you may have a sense of being not worthy of love or being worth rejection, being re feeling rejectable. And that's because when you were very, very young and Chiron wounding starts right after birth, uh, it's a primary wound of rejection. You did something that made you feel, well, that somebody else responded to that made you feel unloved or unsupported or, or they stopped you from doing it or something. And uh, you felt like you couldn't naturally do this, do this thing about yourself or naturally express this. So you're shaped when you're an infant, when you're too young to deal with it. In the course of your life, when chironic things come up, that sense of rejectability or the sense of rejection or abandonment or something like that comes up, the inner infant takes over and you are helpless and clueless. Uh, I can't tell you how many people I've worked with on Chiron issues who, who tell me, I just, I don't understand these particular moments. This part takes over and I'm helpless and clueless and worthless and I don't know what to do. It's because an inner infant is coming up with the pain of having been rejected when you were so young and you didn't know how to deal with it. So everything can be healed and I'll explain a little in this video and then also the book, the other course and the data report tell you more. Um, the 11th house we hear it's about groups and friends, hopes, wishes, dreams. Think about the 11th house starting with goals for the future. What do I want my life to look like? What do I want the world, my community, my town, my neighborhood? That kind of goal setting is, is the core of the 11th house. And then you realize that you can't do it alone. So you look for like-minded others with whom you can share mutually beneficial support. That's the course. So with Chiron in the 11th, a lot of people don't want to be part of groups because they've been singled out. They feel burned. The groups don't fit their value system. They can't work with them. There's always a problem or they have to be quiet. They can't participate. There's always an issue. Uh, people don't want to be part of groups. The issue is the right groups, but you can't find the right group until you do a healing process on the inner infant that I'm going to talk about here. So Chiron is also a marker of uniqueness. It's what you might fear being rejected for because you're unique, because you do things differently. So the kinds of groups that are right for you reflect your unique values. It's not just going to be any group. You have to find it. And so, but, and so, but you will be vulnerable to rejection. So you might not want to be part of groups because they have the power to throw you out or to make you feel weird. Chiron in the 11th, you're never going to want to raise your hand in the group unless you're just very courageous and not afraid of being hurt because you will get funny looks and people won't necessarily at first understand what you're doing and saying because your participation, your approach to the group is different and unique. So you'll never get over that sensitivity to their reactions, but you can accept that you are hypersensitive to how others in groups see you. So A, your goals are gonna be different than a lot of people's goals. The kind of future you want to live in will be different. But B, when you're interacting with people to find out if you can mutually support each other, do we have the same idea of the future? Do we want the same things? You're gonna be hypersensitive to if they don't agree with you. Your job is to accept that you're vulnerable and sensitive and that you maybe have some insecurities when it comes to this 
and move on to another group if, if it's not the right group. If you say, hey, I really want to create a blah, blah, blah future, and everyone's like, no, why would we want to do that? Your job isn't to skulk and be insulted and feel worthless and, and become a wallflower. No, your job is to say, okay, well, maybe my values aren't the same as this group or don't, don't fit together. Maybe I need to go find other people to hang out with. That's the process, but you have to, in that process, as you proceed, be willing to feel the sting of rejection, but recognize you're actually hypersensitive to rejection. So re realize it's happening probably less frequently than you think it is. So backtrack to this inner infant thing. When you were rejected, uh, when you were a kid, when you felt rejected or you couldn't do this part of you, uh, I remember doing an intuitive work on a client once and the story was, when she was too young to remember this, the, the story was in, I think it was in church, she, like the mom is holding the baby and the baby's facing back and the baby's reaching out for a woman in the pew behind. Like the, one, the, the baby's just wanting connection, social connection is in the 11th house and where our tribe is. And this, and this baby is like trying to, and the mother's like trying not to, you know, let the baby crawl or whatever. And so she, the baby feels like she can't reach out to the people she wants to be with. And that client, I, if I remember correctly, uh, didn't always feel at home in her family. And so this story really fit with, with that. And, and so the, the being shaped by, I can't reach out to find the people I need. So, um, with that, whatever that scenario is where you feel like you can't reach out, then you grow up and that baby takes over temporarily and you don't understand how to deal with it. So again, understand that you're hypersensitive, but don't believe you're worthless because other people don't want to work with you. You are the only per this is the key to the Chiron bit. You are the only person who can validate your goals, your vision of the future, what society or what world you want to live in, and you're the only person who can give yourself the benefit of the doubt that if these people you're, who are in front of you don't get it, it doesn't mean that you're wrong or bad or you're doing it wrong. So everybody with Chiron processes, I invite everybody to, uh, I was going to say everybody needs to, but one of the, a major part of the healing is in becoming the parent now for the inner kids who don't feel safe or who feel invalidated or rejected or unloved or unsupported. So make a list of what you wish your parents would have been for you or done for you when you were young and become those things for yourself now to take away that power because Chiron infant within us waits sometimes a whole lifetime for someone to make us feel safe and valid and that we're loved. You have to become the source of love for yourself. And in this case, your goals, other people may always think they're weird, but that doesn't mean they're not valid you get to validate them. So that's the whole process. So um, to understand more about your own Chiron placement, get the Chiron natal report. It treats house sign and aspect in your chart, as well as if your Chiron's retrograde. And it also does or covers transits and progressions to your natal Chiron and transits of Chiron to the rest of your chart. So you can get that at tdjacobs.com under the natal reports area. The Chiron course is under learn astrology, astrology courses. And uh, the book is on Amazon, Kindle, and also on my site. Thanks for your time and energy. I hope this is helpful. Uh, take care of yourself.